Hi, this is BK from ManforWars.com and ManforWars Media, where I'm promoting polite patriotism to help nice ladies and gents worldwide, offline, uh, locally teach kids to be, and uh, to help the same polite patriots uh, worldwide, offline, locally discuss and share great info they find online with their neighbors. Give them a chance to hear different and think for themselves. Only way you can. If it's stupid, laugh at or correct it. If it's smart, enjoy and pass it on, and you'll make better people and better places to live and have a better future. So see the description below for more on that and support these efforts. It's actually a lot more popular to be polite uh, than we're acting. Uh, we're sort of supposed to be a fashionable mess near each other, and yet I don't do that. I don't put up with it unless it's my wife or something, and I can clarify things. Um, I, I don't get into that. And so uh, people know that they don't have to worry about me and they don't have to be somebody I have to worry about. And so a lot of them are super duper nice to me and uh, and there is a real desire for that. It puts us both in a good mood. So um, check it out and do support those efforts. Um, but this video <clears throat> is called, O oh Canada, help parents save our kids from communists or be killed by them for having nice stuff. O oh Canada, help our, uh, save our kids from communists or be killed by them for having nice stuff, All right? And, um, and this is uh, this is true. Um, we, we do have to do this, and I'm going to explain why. But I'll go through a couple of points here, um, you know, talk about what's happening, why this is so important, and why this is something we all have to worry about. And I mean our kids, whether you're a parent who has kids or whether you're a Canadian and, uh, and there's kids around, other people's kids, they're still collectively our kids. Now, the parents have primary responsibility. I don't believe in other people telling parents how to parent their kids unless they're doing something really bad to them. I don't believe in the state. Um, you know, telling people how to parent their kids unless they're doing something really bad to them. But, um, you know, generally speaking, we should all be responsible for, um, for the, the future of our country, which includes our kids. So uh, regardless whether you have kids or not, if you're still going to live here, you have to worry about what's happening to them because whatever happens to them may be something they take out on us. So that's a real key. Um, <clears throat> so the first point is Canadian adults have to be polite. We've got to be polite, we've got to respect each other, and talk well, and teach kids to. And this sort of goes for people around the world, but specifically for Canada, if Canadians aren't polite, what are they? What what are Canadians, right? World famous, nice, polite Canadians. We go anywhere, and, and, and they say, oh, where are you from? Canada. Oh, Canada. Great. Don't have to worry about you. Fantastic. Not going to... Uh, walk too fast, talk too much, be a mess, not going to make a mess, fantastic, right? Or people come to Canada, typically run into polite Canadians from coast to coast, right? If you remove that uh, and you remove our ability to respect each other and communicate well, um, and then our kids don't, you know, have us as good role models, then uh, we all get easier to control, especially younger and more impro impressionable generations who are more social, want to go along to get along with whatever's going on. And so um, they can be less sort of ruggedly individualistic when, um, when, when uh, it's not normal to be polite. It won't be normal for them to be polite unless adults make sure. Um, <clears throat> and, um, and then if most people straight are great at it, then others LGBTQ can be too. And I've seen this myself as somebody old enough to remember, say, pride parades, you know, over 20 years ago, which I used to go to with friends or whatever. And it was mostly polite Canadians, right? People, uh, you know, typically were polite. You didn't notice their orientation so much because it was sort of lady and gentlemanly standard or, or people keeping to themselves or politely acknowledging each other, polite and brief Canadians, polite and brief in a city like Toronto. And then um, at the pride parades, they just, they just dressed up. They just got more flamboyant, right? But there wasn't the fashionable mess, um, you know, uh, brainwashing going on to the same degree back then. So it's possible, and it's possible here in, say, Toronto or here in Canada, right? Um, but if most people straight are great at it, then LGBTQ people can be too, because there's just a bunch of different role models out there. There's some common standards for how we respect each other and communicate well, and people fit in or F off, right? I mean, that's basically it, right? That's how you keep your self-respect. You don't lose yours. You don't take other people's. You have an obligation to make sure you don't lose your self-respect so you're not a mess for yourself all the time and anybody unfortunate enough to be near you the rest of the time, right? Um, now, the opposite of this is the sort of a Ray Kurzweil transhumanist agenda or the post-human era, right? You don't know about transhumanism. It's uh, basically a theory, a plan um, uh, that's been out there for a few years now, and we've been sort of marching towards it with uh, technology and artificial intelligence and social media and merging us with machines, say merging us with our cell phone, which we're addicted to. We can't seem to stop picking up and looking at um, and then and then, you know, advancing along those stages. Right. And uh, if you if you see when it comes to kids and the generations, you have Generation X, say somebody like myself, 
Generation Y, the generation after me, and then Generation Z or Generation Z here in Canada, right? So X, Y, and Z or X, Y, and Z, right? So what comes after that? Nothing, right? In the letters of the alphabet, there's Generation X, Generation Y, Generation Z or Generation Z, Y, right? And so um, you can see there's a larger plan here and, and, and you can look into transhumanism more for yourself, but people like Elon Musk and others are already talking about uh, a brain chip merging us with machines, you know, going from wearable virtual technology to sort of being part of the matrix, right? And that's a lot of why we're being uh, discouraged from being polite ladies and gents, right? It's, uh, it's a lot of why um, they're promoting so many genders and sexualizing kids and the LGBT whatever agenda, which I'm not against if they're not bullying people because they're a mess and we have to change everything that we like to do to accommodate them. It's like, no, no, you're, you know, we, we, we should promote what works for most people, you know, which is nice, polite, straight people getting married, having, you know, 2.5, uh, you know, three kids, replacement value for your population, right? Um, so you promote that. And then as cultures that encourage freedom, you allow individuals to be, say, single, say, you know, a dog man or a cat lady or gay or, or lesbian or trans or whatever, right? But they fit into a polite Canadian culture and, uh, and, and they aren't a mess who has to force the rest of us to change what we like to do to accommodate them, right? But that's why they promote so many genders. They promote, you know, 75 different genders and five different biological sexes and all this other sort of nonsense because it's meant to confuse us. It's not meant to make those people happy. It's meant to screw up the rest of us. And if we screw up everybody, even those people won't be happy. And disempowered people get power from bringing people down. Misery loves company. Empowered people get power from bringing people up. Right. And as I've often said, you can't bring me down when I can bring you up. You know, why would why would I do that? Right. If you got a problem, grown ass man, I can obviously at least hear anything, possibly say something to help. So you can't bring me down when I can bring you up. Right. If, if that's your goal, screw it. Right. I got to make sure I'm cool for the next time we hang out or the next person I hang out with. Right. And that's that's just the way it is. Right. Now, I know people are having trouble with that here in, in communist Canada and, and in places around the world, especially more liberal areas where there's more of this propaganda concentrated in attacking people. Conservatives try and preserve what works to make people happy. Liberals often try and push for changes to make people happy. When we're all polite Canadians or polite people, wherever you are, who respect each other, then it's a it's an honest, interesting conversation, right? But with the radical left uh, being pushed by the globalist, super rich, evil people, central banksters, print money from nothing to control the world, want to demoralize and destabilize and destroy countries and people worldwide um, because then they can fold everyone into sort of a world government or a global governance structure run by the UN and other international groups because of their influence. We've got a situation where the liberals are like the Harlem Globetrotters basketball team. They're supposed to win. The uh, conservatives are like the Washington Generals basketball team who the Globetrotters tour with. They're supposed to lose. So that's who they want in power because then they can keep pushing for changes, even if those changes have radical short-term and long-term destabilizing effects. That's what the culture generally pushes. That's why you see so many, you know, radical leftists, you know, trying to one-up each other in terms of how hardcore they are pushing that. And so many weak conservatives out there in prominent positions of power in politics or in the media taking losses to them and not standing for traditional values that, that represent their base because they're supposed to lose and the radical left is supposed to win as part of this, this big communist takeover. So just from a pure... Um, you know, self-respect, respecting each other and communicating well perspective, it's important for us to get that uh, get that down, right? And, um, <clears throat> and everybody understands, you know, it's not like people don't understand what the hell I'm talking about. People know and people are super nice to me and there's no reason for them to be nice to me if I'm completely wrong or I'm a jerk or I'm an idiot or they like doing that. It's like nobody does. Nobody likes being a fashionable mess. So to the best of your ability, try and help people you know stop by politely ignoring them or discouraging them or asking them what, what their issue is, finding some way around it. And with strangers, try and help them stop by politely ignoring and discouraging it as well. And uh, don't confuse or bother or blame or embarrass anyone. Let other people know you still want to be a polite Canadian. And uh, if you want to be a polite Canadian, you might see a polite Canadian because they know it's safe to be a polite Canadian with you, right? Um, <clears throat> so um, the next point is that we have to be polite 
or our commie zombie kids will kill us all for having and giving them nice stuff. So we have to be polite, right? Um, and, uh, and, and, and if we're not polite, and we're not adults who respect each other, then our kids won't respect us. Why would they respect us when we're sort of self-absorbed, you know, uh, cucked up people, right? Why would they respect us, right? That's also why a lot of kids are switching genders because no strong male role model. So boys like, meh, maybe I'll be a girl, get more attention, everyone, you know, uh, fussing over me because I'm changing my gender as a boy. I keep getting crapped on for having energy and, and being, and, and, you know, wanting to do stuff and not just sit there or whatever. And as a girl, you know, she's like, ah, don't have a strong role model as a, as a mom. So why would I want to do that? Maybe I'll be a boy. I'm discouraged from being a girl anyway. Girls are weak. I'm supposed to be more like a man and, and so on. So, eh. So there's all this brainwashing and propaganda that strong, proud, polite Canadian adults have to help our kids deal with. Otherwise, you see all these problems going on when it comes to kids today. Well, you can't just say kids today. What are you going to do? What are you going to say? Right? It's, it's up to adults to not just be disempowered about everything, including uh, our kids' present and our future and our own futures dealing with, you know, whatever's happening with respect to our kids and everything else, right? Um, <clears throat> and so, you know, uh, when it comes to our commie zombies killing us, all for, for having and giving them nice stuff, basically, it's because Greta said that us having nice stuff made the weather bad in a few years, supposedly, and the weather getting bad means that destroyed the earth. So we had nice stuff, we had nice shirts and ties we had nice you know uh homes and cars and we tried to give our kids everything we gave them a nice room and nice stuff and an xbox and a tv and nice clothes and 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 tried to you know save for their you know college university education or whatever right gave them you know whatever we gave them everything right and the kids are being taught all that stuff that we had is um is um contributing to climate change or the possibility that the weather might be bad. You know, I'm not exactly sure how, because now it's climate change. In the 70s, it was global cooling. Turned out to be a fraud. In the 90s and 2000s, they started promoting global warming. That turned out to be a fraud. Now it's just climate change. Just the weather's going to be awful in 10 years. I'm a mess about it. <clears throat> I can't talk to you about it because it's fashionable to be a mess about stuff instead of be cool and be somebody who can make sure they're not a mess and other people aren't a mess and communicate about it so you can't even talk about it because them being a mess is what they're supposed to do unless <clears throat> adults aren't a mess and we make sure kids aren't too right um and not just greta it's just that the, you know this is being promoted in the education system in the media you know um you know all over the place right in celebrities and so on so excuse me this is something we've got to deal with um now, um, also, um, you know, when it comes to this, the kids are miserable these days, right? And I talked to somebody in you know, early 20s, um, you know, late, uh, early mid 20s around there. He says his generation feels suicidal. And I told him, holy crap, when I was your age, I was bouncing off the walls at how stupidly happy I was, right? Because nothing close to suicidal when I was a, a young man in, in my early 20s or teens, I was doing pretty well, right? Yeah, obviously, I got some problems, but I wasn't it, you know, I wasn't suicidal and my generation wasn't suicidal, right? But the kids are now being taught that all of us adults and everyone in the past was a racist, sexist, phobic, homophobic, whatever phobic, right? And so that's why the past sucked. That's why the present sucks. And because of that and because of climate change and, you know, other apocalyptic scenarios, the future is going to suck right? So what's the point of even living, right? And people suck, right? We're all victims of this systemic soup we're in. And so, you know, we're all supposed to be victims. We're all supposed to be a mess. So if everything was a mess and people were jerks, and because of that, everything is a mess. And because the future sucks, you can see why young people are suicidal. So this is something where anybody old enough to know, <clears throat> like, like, no, this is crap, right? I'm old enough to know, right? Like, still cool, you know, like Gavin McInnes, famous comedian, uh, a talk show host and so on. Still cool, even if the world's a mess, I'm still cool, try and make sure it's still cool. And, um, and, and, and so I know that we didn't freak out about these things, right? If there was a racist who, you know, uh, did something racist or said something racist or some racist incident was happening, we knew that we weren't all supposed to freak out. We just knew they were an idiot, right? You either corrected them or you ostracized them 
but you didn't all freak out like this is a huge problem and we all have to feel bad. You're just like, so what, right? So what, like, who cares, right? If somebody says, you know, ice cream's gross, it doesn't taste good at all. You're just like, that's an idiot, right? If someone says, well, black people this or whatever people that or so-and-so, it's like, you're just an idiot, right? Like we have enough people around to know, we've interacted with them that not all person X, Y, or Z is this stereotype, right? Um, and so we didn't freak out about this. So any adults out there that know not to freak out over people that are <clears throat> idiots, you know, um, you know, is, is healthy because then you're not an idiot freaking out over that idiot. We got to teach kids uh, to make sure, right? Um, and so uh, they feel like they have no future. And, and the only solution to systemic racism and more is a radical communist revolution by any means necessary, right? That's the only solution, right? If you say, you know, and you know, you'll have kids out there. I filmed some 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 kids at the Black Lives Matter protests or whatever, and, and, and given the speeches, and you know, they got some passion, they got some whatever, and there's certainly some issues in the system to clean up. There's no doubt when it comes to racism or corruption or whatever, right? So it's not perfect, but their attitude is that the system is so rotten, it's so horrible, we feel so bad, which is the key. We feel so bad about it that it needs to be completely dismantled and completely torn down and completely destroyed by any means necessary. So that's why you've got the uh, radical uh, Black Lives Matter activists, not the normal protesters just trying to get a voice out there, the radical Antifa, uh, anti-fascist, you know, protesters. And anti-fascist is just a cover word for fascist, right? If you're going to be a fascist and you demand a fascist communist takeover, the best way to brand yourself is to call yourself anti-fascist right um because then you can say well i'm fighting fascism that's why i'm beating up people and scaring people and you know uh, uh, uh destroying businesses and 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 radically you know destroying the culture and bringing in a sort of you know communist martial law crackdown right because i'm anti-fascist it's like well, you're doing the same thing the fascists do you, you know so so you're not anti-fascist you are a fascist uh -uh, i called myself antifa anti-fascist right so they used to be known as the Black Bloc back in my day, back when I was younger, and 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 so it's the same people, but now they've they've changed their their uh, branding so that it's hard to call them fascists when their name is anti-fascist. But that's you know if McDonald's call themselves health food, you know health food, health food, fast food, you know uh, you know uh, health food, you know health food in five minutes, right? You can say eh, your food isn't exactly healthy. Uh uh, we called ourselves health food, right? So. You know, that's how they try and fool us into 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 accepting them as being anti-racism, anti-this, anti-that, when they are, in fact, the actual fascist. And they have a lot of funding from some big backers, George Soros and, and big media and big corporations and big banksters and so on, you know, behind all this. Otherwise, they couldn't be this successful. And there's a lot of infiltration uh, by their allies in systems of media and government and so on that, that, that you know, uh, prevents... Uh, uh, countries from having a healthy check and balance on their activities, right? So, so we've got to fight against all this because because these are the foot soldiers of a larger plan, right? Um, <clears throat> now, when they say they want uh, you know to end systemic racism and the system has to be torn down and blah blah blah, this really means a Marxist year zero reset, right? With useful idiots and willful idiots working for brilliant psychopathic banksters, right? And, and what, what does this mean? Well, in, in the Marxist sort of way of looking at things, right? If everything sucks so much and you convince everything to suck, so you convince, you know, your followers that everything sucks so much and they have the right attitude about this, right? Then they send armies out there. And again, this also attacks why Canadians aren't as polite as they are being turned to zombies. Commie zombies are corporate clones, right? Um, you, you convince your followers that everything sucks. You're supposed to be a mess. If you're not a mess, you're not empathizing with how much of a mess other people are, and you're a mess, and they're a mess, and everybody's a mess, mess, right? And um, and so what the communists do is they take all the nice, smart, happy, successful, and helpful people, and they convert them into being commie zombies, or they kill them. And that's what's happening right now here in Canada, now communist Canada, unless we stop it, right? Because the same thing is happening on a generic level when it comes to people respecting each other, and with specific policies and legislation and media indoctrination and education indoctrination and workplace cultures where you got to go there and you've got to be like, well, you're all racist, sexist, and phobic, and so we need to 
beat you down and weaken you and re-educate you. It's like, no, I'm not. I get along fine. Gains are polite and polite. If the gains are not, then, you know, next time or next person, what's the big deal? It's like, no, 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 no. So in between the media and education and corporations, you know, putting in all this diversity training and diversity officers and we're not diverse enough and we don't learn how messed up these people are. It's like, they're not messed up. They're fine. Right? We're all polite Canadians. They're fine. They, they work here. They do a good job. They're nice people. We're nice to them. Nobody cares. Right? Um, but that's not what the Marxist year zero reset is. Right? Um, and so the communists killed 50 million in Russia this way, 50 million in China this way. They've killed millions the sort of 20 times or so they've taken over in, in countries around the world. And, uh, and just like in Cambodia, they killed a couple of million people. They're looking for a Marxist year zero reset, where if you're not a mess, you're not doing the right thing. So if you are a nice, smart, happy, successful, helpful person, like myself and, and others, and many people want to be, you know, we're not as, as weak as is fashionable. You can get that out of people if you try, right? Which is what one of the main things I'm stressing here. Um, then uh, then you can help people not be a mess, right? I mean, I've talked to some of you, even some of the Black Lives Matter people. I've talked to some of them and whatever, and I've been like, you know, you don't have to be all messed up. And, and here's, you know, some some pointers and you hope your movement isn't infiltrated by the feds or communists or whatever, you know, taking you down and making you all weak and easy to control. Hopefully you can be polite people that can have healthy conversations about what your group's interests are and then appeal to everybody else and have them say, that's reasonable and let's make some some changes, right? Let's get some, some, some better policies. Let's get some corruption out of the system when it comes to if it's affecting different groups of people, right? That's fair enough, right? Um, and so, you know, you can do that but we're not supposed to, right? They're supposed to look at us like we're crazy for not being a mess. And they did the same thing in Russia and China as well, right? They took all the, there were Russians, no, what do you mean, baby? I'm a strong Russian man. What do you want? I get you something. And the Russian women are taught with International Women's Day on March 8th, which was formalized in Russia as a holiday in the early 1900s and started in America, but it was also started by the communists there. And, um, and in communist Russia, it, it, it really gained a foothold as a national holiday. And so when the strong Russian men were like, baby, what do you need? I'm strong Russian man. I get for you, of course. You're right? She was like, no, we don't need, shut up, Mr. Man. You've been holding us down for too long. We need more from the government. We need more from the government. And the same things continued for a hundred years since, right? And, um, and so, um, you know, they take all the people that could help them not be a mess and they try and convert or kill them. And the Marxist year zero reset is to destroy God, religion, tradition, family, men, women, culture, uh, everything. It's, it's a year zero reset. We need to, this is all so horrible. We feel so horrible about this that we have to destroy everything and reset it and start from the beginning because it's just so bad, right? These same kids with, you know, iPhones and internet and fancy clothes and, and you know, music and, 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 and blah, 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 are all being taught that everything is horrible even though they have more stuff than any generation in history, right? And it's up to adults to, to, to um, you know, to clean this up because if they can have everything and be told it's all crap and they're supposed to feel like crap and we're crap and everything before was crap, everything now is crap and the future is going to be crap, then you can see why they would push for this Marxist year zero reset of everything, right? And it's all brainwashing. It's all indoctrination. It's not something you can practically see on the ground, right? If you... If you step back and you realize you don't have to be a fashionable mess and other people don't have to be a fashionable mess, you'd be like, well, things aren't that bad. You know, you don't have to be, oh, work's okay. Everything's okay. You know how it is. You're insecure and I'm insecure and you're a mess and I'm a mess and I can't be confident because I'll make you feel more insecure about being a mess. So I'll be a mess. You know, all that type of crap. We have to battle against that. Um, and, um, and, 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 and useful idiots at the bottom, right? Just to the radical mobs going out in the streets and attacking statues like like anybody like that statue was doing anybody nobody even paid attention to it right but and all of a sudden that's this is a huge symbol of racism and by toppling this two-ton statue and hopefully not killing any of us while we do it we'll be fighting racism but nobody gave a crap about that statue it didn't do anything right uh, you know if you want to improve community policing and, and and you know have better relationships with them so they get the bad guys and stop them from messing with the community and they aren't bad guys themselves that i get but attacking statues, that's just nonsense. And that's why it's part of this, this reset, right? Um, and so you got useful idiots, then you've got willful idiots above them, the sort of activist controllers, right? Who are like, 
hey, I get some money for this or I get some power from this and I get to organize this group of weak, disempowered people to attack other people, so I'm in charge of this, right? And then you've got uh, the brilliant bankster psychopaths at the top who want to use this COVID-1984 pandemic hoax and the BLM Antifa riots and more sort of destabilization they've prepared us for by demoralizing and destabilizing our cultures in a variety of ways. They want to use that to destroy small businesses, destroy their competition, uh, uh, weaken and scare all of us and get more control over all of us, right? So they own everything or the government owns everything, right? Where you basically, you're like, well, this pandemic destroyed small businesses. And so they're out of, you know, they're out of business and people are out of work, but don't worry. We can make sure that uh, if, you, if, you, if you can't get a, a job, we'll give you a check. If you can't run a business, the government will run your business. If you can't pay for your house, the government will buy your house. Now the government owns everything, right? They give you a couple of thousand bucks a month as a basic communist stipend to everybody, right? They uh, run your business, so it's totally controlled by the government. You can't control it and grow it and, and be successful and, and do much with it. Tons of regulations and restrictions. And they own your house because you can't pay for it, but that's okay. It's a, you know, it's all, you know, they push for affordable housing instead of pushing for economic conditions that let people buy their own house. Why? Also part of communism, right? And so you might say, well, we need affordable housing. These poor people, hey, help these poor people not be poor people. Don't just help these poor people, uh, you know, get subsidized affordable housing and then live off government checks because that makes us all slaves to the government. And that's what they push for, right? Um, now, when it comes to this and when it comes to um, uh, kids, um, you know, our, our commie kids, um, you know, uh, controlling us, I recommend, and I'll put links to this below, um, the work of, uh, of the great Millie Weaver, Millennial Millie, Millie Weaver. She's a, a, a lovely, feisty, uh, blonde uh, girl who works for the InfoWars family of journalists, the InfoWars.com family. And um, at her website, millennialmillie.com, or at band.video, I'll put links below to her, her website and these, these reports here. Um, you can see that she recently did a two-year investigation into the Sunshine Project. The Sunshine Project. So what is the Sunshine Project? The Sunshine Project is... Um, uh, they had a mole inside uh, the Sunshine Project, which is a, uh, a brainwashing um, <clears throat> uh, environmentalist group to brainwash all of our kids into basically saying, like I said at the beginning, you know, your parents had nice stuff, that made the weather bad, that destroyed the earth, so we have to destroy them, right? Since we can't have nice stuff, only the central banksters and their allies can. We've all got to be poor, living in mud huts, riding in bicycles or electronic Ubers that only take us certain places. We can't use this and that, right? And we've got to kill, um, convert or kill all of our parents who want to have nice stuff, want their kids to have nice stuff, and want their kids to have better lives than them, right? So it's the exact opposite of what adults want for their children, right? Uh, you, you want your, you, had a, you, you worked hard uh, to try and have a, a good life, and you hope, you know, your kids have it even better than you did. Our kids are being brainwashed at the Sunrise uh, uh, Project um, to to not right, and and it's you know they're being caught up with racial issues and sexism issues and homophobia phobia issues and 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 and, and the environment and sustainability and we all have to use less and blah 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 blah, and they're literally this is happening in schools. It's happening in these activism groups. They are brainwashing our kids to attack us like commie zombies. And if we don't respect each other, we're not worth listening to, then why wouldn't they, right? Because of all this brainwashing um, coming at them. So um, because she had a mole inside there for two years um, and because they left their servers open to kind of get a lot of their data, a lot of their reports, a lot of their videos, they downloaded tons and tons of gigabytes from the Sunrise Project to sort of back what they're saying. So this isn't just a theory. This is tons and tons of evidence supporting um, you know claims about what they're doing and so it's important to look into that if you're a parent see the links below um, for um, for the great work of uh, millennial Millie uh, Millie Weaver and her team um, so um, you know what do we do about this right you know well um, you know a couple of things right um, when it comes to Patriots out there uh, red pills versus blue balls boys and, and, and girls and so on right um, you know we need to stop sneaking around and, and, you know, quote unquote, waking people up 
or quote unquote opening minds uh, by bit by bit by planting seeds, right? That's sort of all old school talk, right? And you know, used to say, well, you know, people are this, and you don't want to that, and yada yada yada, right? And I think a lot of that was engineered, right? I mean, they've got us in the matrix, they've got us on the internet, and we can say, oh, they don't want us to know this, they don't want us to know that. No, maybe they do. Maybe they want us to know it, what they're up to. Maybe they want us to get used to it. Maybe they want to see what we'll do about it and document that. And then maybe they want to see that a lot of us won't do shit. So screw us. You know, we got them, right? It's a lot tougher, um, you know, to deal with people who connect with their neighbors um, and, 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 and demand, you know, um, you know, significant uh, uh, policy changes and leadership changes at the municipal, state, or provincial, or federal level, or or with your local sheriff, right, who, who, who talk to each other. It's a lot harder to deal with them than it is to people who are constantly talking to strangers on the internet, right, where you're constantly tweeting and retweeting and reposting and looking for likes and thumbs to get respect instead of showing and getting it, don't lie, look a man in the eye, you know, that, that sort of thing, right? Um, so, you know, part of this might be, you know, how they propagandize us, right? And then, of course, they could, you know, control it. They could, they could control what's online. They could control what's get pop, what gets popular, right? They could take somebody like me that has a real popular vibe on the streets, and 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 I've proven it, HD video. And they could say on the internet, we're going to make sure you're less popular than you seem. And then other people see and judge me based on what's on the internet, and they go, eh, right? Guess he's not that popular. I mean, my YouTube channel, for example, right? I've gotten up to like seven, eight hundred subs recently. I've had like five or six channels deleted. Last channel got uh, seven, eight hundred subs. Bang, deleted. Three emails in eight minutes. This video is offensive. This video is offensive. This video is offensive. Gone, right? So that, that's close as I got, you know, say, you know, a, a year plus ago. So I started another YouTube channel, and now I've got, <clears throat> I'm at 150 subs, and you know, about. 80 of these are in the last few weeks as I've been more active in Toronto, meeting more people, connecting with more people, putting up more stuff and, and so on, right? But people will approach me and say, you're not stupid. You know, you should have at least a thousand subs just by virtue of being a Canadian patriot and, and among the, the, the people who are better at it in, in a fairly small community in Canada. What's up? I'm like, they censor the crap out of me. You know, YouTube deleted 27 of my videos in three days. I have a YouTube video up there about it where I, I talk about it for two hours. I show you all the emails they sent to my Man for Wars Media at Gmail account. And these were all community guideline strikes, right? Where it's like, they're, they're not a, stri a content strike where it's a violation and you get three and you're booted. Um, but they're more like, this video is offensive, so we took it down. May 20th, 21st, and 22nd, 18 videos on the 20th and 21st, nine videos on the 22nd, 27, right? And it, they've deleted more than that. They deleted like 50 of my videos, but that was just, for example, in three days. So <clears throat> my point is that <clears throat> I think they want to keep me on there and keep me looking not that popular so that other people don't have any faith in me or these ideas more specifically, right? Me, me, whatever. But the ideas out there um, that, are, that are much more popular on a street level, they keep me confident and busy and happy um, and they keep me good company for people that want to be good company with me those ideas are discouraged right and my manforwars.com idea where men man up help other men man up help women and children chill out those are popular even if they're not discussed they're popular by virtue of my interactions with very very diverse groups of people who all go meh he's cool you're be a mess and be politely ignored or be cool and have someone to be cool with you know simple as that right and uh, and 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 everybody understands everywhere i go <clears throat> all day but if they can if they can you know kick me off facebook <clears throat> you know and they don't want to snitch on my friends to screw facebook where they start asking you for the information about them instead of just information about you which is bad enough kick me off twitter um and and so on right <clears throat> then they can <clears throat> they can artificially censor that. Now, I'm not even talking about me. I'm talking about how this whole thing works, right? Where they can, you know, say, we're going to promote this. We're going to give it, you know, 100,000 likes and thumbs, right? It can all be done digitally behind the scenes. So taking myself out of the equation, because maybe I'm just whatever. Maybe maybe it's like, well, people, you know, don't have any confidence or faith in, in the ideas you're putting out there, or you're not as smart as you think you are, or you're not as you know good as you think you are. Fair, All that's fair enough. But the principle is that they can manipulate everything digitally to convince us, you know, of, of, of what they want to convince us is popular, as opposed to on a street level with people, you know, knowing what's popular, uh, being convinced of what's popular. So it's important to understand that. 
on platforms like YouTube, on platforms like Twitter, uh, on Facebook, and even on independent platforms like BitChute out of England. <clears throat> Who knows? I've heard founder Ray Vahi speak a couple of times. Seems like a decent guy, but BitChute doesn't get out there that much. So who knows if they're controlled, right? Um, as the main alternative to YouTube, it's arguable that they probably are, right? Um, Gab, founder Andrew Torba is out there a lot, right? Um, but who knows when, when it comes to all this stuff, right? And who knows, you know, <clears throat> what's behind them? So even if you have Patriot platforms, are there, you know, bigger intelligence agency forces and so on, um, you know, with, with superior technology that can manipulate things above you know what's going on because it's all digital now so i'm not trying to slander anybody when it comes to this i'm saying we've got to do more right and <clears throat> one of the things that they promoted excuse me is in terms of waking people up you got to plant some seeds you got to you know open minds bit by bit here and there you know when it comes to waking people up <clears throat> well all that incremental change isn't very ambitious right and so you know if we just do that um you know and we don't have radical solutions to this radical revolution re revolution then uh, we'll we'll be doing too little too late right so we need to do much more than the just the traditional you know do what you can here or there mention it here or there sprinkle some things here and there you know make a phone call here and there to a radio station and mention something mention some facts or mention a website you know go to a protest with a few hundred or you know, people or a thousand people or whatever get together say we're really mad we already know protest is over let's go home like these are all controlled solutions now <clears throat> all that stuff can have some positive impact i'm not saying it's all crap right making little incursions speaking a little bit more freely encouraging people to speak freely all those things help and protests can be used to show the number of people who believe in something can get together big house party environment as long as you're not angry radical pissing people off like the great canadian house party at um, the anti-lockdown rallies in toronto are a great example of proud polite patriotic courageous canadians politely acknowledging each other politely looking at and talking to each other safe place for uh, kids family friends neighbors tons of video on this so it's it's all verifiably proven it's nice to have <clears throat> you know 500 at most you know like 800 people there <clears throat> and at least like 300 people there <clears throat> getting together but about 500 people say every week for like nine weeks together to show solidarity you know but at the same time at those protests you know many of, of us you know are at the side of queen's park on a saturday queen's park is where the ontario provincial government legislature is and <clears throat> on the side it's a little parkette area small park area in front of this government building and it's a saturday so the government building's closed right and um it's in an area <clears throat> excuse me where there's not a lot of traffic there's not a lot of traffic right there's not a lot of foot traffic because it's a government building it's closed on saturdays <clears throat> there's um grassy areas around it south of there is the toronto Healthcare district not much traffic but there's not a commercial area not a lot of stores there shops restaurants and so on all that stuff is either not there or it's closed on a weekend right so especially during this covid19 you know pandemic nonsense right so <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry about that. I know this can be annoying in vlogs, so I'll try and clean it up for a bit. <clears throat> so, um, so, um, so you know, have people that are at the edge of the of the road, right, holding up signs, hoping cars honk, you know, to see the sign and honk as a show of approval, right? And that's good, right? But that's not connecting as well with your neighbors as you could, right? It's good. And it's good to have us all there and connecting with each other and so on but that shows the desire of people to reach out to their neighbors and so the desire is good and more practical ways to are even better plus sometimes we've marched through the streets of toronto which is even better and uh working with the 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 the, the, the great cops of the toronto police services who've uh, done a great job you know working with us to kind of walk safely through the streets of toronto and 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 getting you know from less crowded areas to doing it comfortably there to now more crowded areas relatively toronto is very empty because of this stupid covid 1984 pandemic hoax nonsense so the amount of foot traffic out is is a lot less than it used to be but uh even during beautiful summer days but you know we're out there we're mixing up with the public and for people who feel you know they can't you know say or do anything they they can't act 
what they can do is they can react. They can react to Patriots acting, right? Owen Benjamin said, evil always wins because they act, right? And he's got a great uh, uh, stream, uh, number 869, where he goes into that in detail. Why does evil always win? Because they act. They don't just learn stuff. They act. They have plans. They have organizations. They don't just learn what's going on. They they, they plan to do something, right? And, um, <clears throat> and it's the same with Patriots, where, where <clears throat> even if most people are disempowered and they're fashionably a mess, um, you know, if Patriots act, then civilians can react. And I've got a bunch of video from the last one on June 20th, 2020, where we marched through the streets of Toronto, up college, up church, uh, uh, and, and up well, or, or west on Wellesley, and then south on Young, and then back up college to Queens Park. And I was filming not just the march, but the other people around the march. And my vibe is like, people know that this COVID-19 nonsense is BS. The shutdowns and lockdowns are BS. They're not screaming at us like we're crazy. They're not freaking out on us, even if they're wearing masks or whatever, as is the fashion. They're like, wow, those people look, uh, you know, uh, strong and proud and free. Like they're trying to keep the true north strong and free, like the Canadian national anthem says. And um, and they didn't look at us like we were crazy, <clears throat> handing out some flyers to some people, looking by us, people start filming us and, and so on. And uh, and even just, just you know, uh, identifying as people like this and walking from there to, say, a street action at, at Dundas Square, you know, people see the sign and we're waiting for somebody to, to use the loo, use the washroom, and they start talking to us. Hey, what's your sign about? Oh, yeah, I think this is BS, too. You know, I mean, people know and people want to talk to people about this when they know it's safe to. And that's patriots, right? So the key point I'm making is if patriots really act, then civilians can really react. And once they get strong enough reacting to actions, then they'll get strong enough to act. So that's something where it's not just sneaking around a little bit here and there. And, you know, uh, you know, I, you know, I had a decent conversation here. I brought it up there and planted a little seed here. It's like, no, no, we can have significant actions and get significant reactions from people. And that's really important. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, we need to take uh, the millions of people online in the matrix and get us offline as coalitions reaching our neighbors, right? Coalitions of people, coalitions of people in Toronto saying we're a thousand people, we're 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 people, 10,000 people, you know, 25,000 people say who voted for Faith Goldie uh, for mayor of Toronto, all that stuff seemed to be kind of rigged. 25,667 votes she got, a little weird with the 666 illusions, um, but whatever. The point is, you know, probably at least 20,000, 25,000, maybe it might have been 50,000, who knows? But the point is that. <clears throat> at least 25,000 people can get together and say, hey, fellow people in Toronto, we want you to listen to this, give this a chance. You know, here's our message. Here's our sources. Stupid, laugh at or correct it. Smart, enjoy, pass it on. There's all sorts of information out there, um, you know, that that's good and bad, but don't get your manties or panties in a bunch, right? These are what your neighbors want you to think um, about. Not, watch, not gonna tell you what to think, but give you something to think about, right? So um, coalitions are important, and even <clears throat> coalitions from, from the protests where you say, hey, we're, you know, uh, the line Canada.com or fearlessontario.ca or unifythepeople.ca, a separate group out of Western Canada that's working to create a, a Canadian constitution with guaranteed rights as opposed to the wishy-washy stuff that we have right now where <clears throat> you can sort of, you don't have guaranteed rights. You have mob rule where if the mob decides this, then there go your rights, right? Um, and you can say, and, they, and they've got thousands uh, of supporters. And you can say, look, you know, we are reaching out on behalf of these thousands of people to different groups of Canadians, right? They're the Canadian, you know, restaurant owners, the Canadian Hairdresser Association, the Canadian lawyers, the Canadian doctors or nurses union, the Canadian, you know, uh, you know, whatever ethnic groups, the Chinese Canadian Association, the Indi Indo Canadian Association, um, you know, different neighborhoods and so on, and say, look, we want you to take us seriously. We want you to, you know, listen to this. We want to establish a relationship and a dialogue. We want to <clears throat> show up to one of your meetings and give a presentation for five or 10 minutes as part of your two hour meeting. We want to come to your parties and show we're cool, right? We're not crazy. You're not sheep. We're not too crazy to make a thousand friends. You're not sheep. You're responsible Canadians with, you know, families and lives and, 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 and jobs and businesses and mortgages and so on. So let's connect like we respect each other as adults about things that we're passionate about which is when it comes to patriots, there's some information and there's an understanding. When it comes to civilians, there's their families, their friends, and their future. And it's all connected, right? So to deal with this sort of radical attack on us and our kids and our future, 
we need to have radical solutions, but not in the leftist Marxist zero messed up mess, messing with people, agree to be a mess, destroy everything, everything sucked, everything does, and everything will unless we destroy everything and change it. Not in that, but radical in the sense of being radically proud and polite and patriotic Canadians who are great people to see and be and, and who connect well with people uh, whenever there's an opportunity, right? Um, so that's really important, right? Um, <clears throat> now, we need to take you know, a bunch of isolated people, right? Whether it's isolated uh, patriots, um, you know, out there uh, in Red Pillville or, um, or isolated uh, civilians, right? And we need to take isolated patriots and isolated uh, uh, civilians and we need to invite them to be part of something bigger and stronger that we create, right? Um, so if you're isolated out there as a patriot, very individualistic and so on and do your own thing and blah, blah, blah and, you know, go in your own way and, you know, people are, are, you know, they don't respect you. They don't want to listen to you. And so you don't respect them. They don't want to respect you. And you're more isolated and so on. Or you, you're doing your own thing. You have your own interests. That's fine. But you can still fold that into a general patriot collective pushing for freedom, right? It's totally fine to have a bunch of individuals as part of a collective. Like there's 500 individuals at the Toronto anti-lockdown rallies or protest is a little strong. Rally is a good word for it. The Great Canadian House Party is what I call it, because that's what it looks like to me. It's like a happy Canada Day party. I mean, people are pissed off about certain things we've got to deal with, like the lockdown and, and more issues and you know possible dangers of 5G, possible dangers of mandatory COVID-19 passports and contact tracing or constantly being tracked by the government or mandatory vaccines, right? And all this other crap out there and the corruption in the system behind this. So none of this stuff is safe when there's that much corruption behind it, pushing it. And if they say it's safe, the people who are, put, are pushing it are corrupt. So they're probably lying and it's probably not safe. You know, it's probably like, well, we don't store your information or your identity, bull crap. Well, the vaccines are perfectly safe, bull crap, right? Um, you know, so, you know, there's people pissed off about stuff. But they're polite, proud, patriotic Canadians who respect each other and communicate well about fun or serious stuff. So it's like a great Canadian house party where we're not just stupidly happy and getting drunk because we live in a nice country, but we are getting along well with each other. And sometimes some people are bringing food and, 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 and so on. And it's a bunch of nice guys and nice girls and nice kids, right? So, you know, that's a, that's a healthy coalition, right? And we can take isolated people in Red Pillville and invite them, you know, to join coalitions like this and isolated people in Blue Pillville, where you say you are invited to a party. You're invited to join something bigger and stronger, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, than, than, you know, big, big and strong enough to protect you, right? Big and strong enough to be cool with you, where we build up communities, we build up relationships with each other, we build up, um, you know, support for each other's, you know, social media and YouTube channels and BitChute channels and so on and Facebook friends and all that crap, right? And we build up business relationships where we're like, hey, I'd like to do business with fellow patriots. You know, well, I'm a butcher, a baker, and a candlestick maker. And you know, I could use some butchering, some bakering, some candlestick making. You know, I'm a carpenter, I'm a this, I'm a plumber, I'm a whatever. And we liaise with each other. And if we ever need something, we connect with each other. And we support this, uh, this sort of independent community. And we grow this independent community as a reaction to this, you know, as, as opposed to being scared and don't say anything, don't do anything and, and just let everything, you know, collapse and let our commie zombie kids kill us because we had nice stuff and that made bad weather and that destroyed the earth and it's our fault as adults, right? We can transcend that, right? Um, so um, so the, the type of coalitions idea is, is a real key. Um, Another part is the offline info war, where, um, you know, we did this ourselves and I've spoken on this often because it worked, it worked great, right? Patriots, you know, um, set up meetings, you know, local meetings in different cities. You establish this is, you know, a meetup group, right? Or uh, you can use, um, you know, uh, other, I think there's another, was it group? I forget what the name is, but I'm going to set up one soon in Toronto. Um, um, but um, use meetup.com or some other group and set up local Patriot groups, meet, you know, for to share a meal like every Saturday, like we did from like one to three or whatever, become friends, feel like acting, set up a table in the center of, of your town or city with lots of people milling about, politely ignore people ignoring you, no problem, you're polite patriots, you don't bother people, politely acknowledge, say hi to people saying hi to you, no problem, don't have to worry about you and what you do, you know, what you stand for and what you do, right? Um, politely share some info to go, pass out some flyers, pass out whatever, or politely talk to people who want to talk to you and have a table with 
posters and flyers and DVDs, have conversations, you know, pay for it out of pocket, take some donations or whatever. And while you're allowed out and allowed to do this, you can do this. And if you have to, use masks, hand sanitizer, stay six feet away, stretch out your arms. Don't bother people paranoid and messed up. Just prove you're not. Eventually, they'll come around to you. We all gravitate towards power. And if you're proud, polite, patriotic Canadians that are in control of your power and disciplined about it, they'll respect that and want to know your secret and maybe check you out. They might even walk by a couple of times, and then when they see how cool you are with each other, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20, whatever people, um, you know, and, and they see you're cool with each other, they see you're cool with other Canadians, other people, wherever you live, right, milling about in a busy part of town on, on a Saturday or, or other days, then they'll go, okay, it's safe to kind of uh, interact with you in some way, right? So, you know, that, that's, what, that's what we did. That's what happened. That's how we beat swine flu last time. And so people can do that in towns and cities across Canada and around the world is you set up a meeting, become friends, feel like acting, meet and greet table, and then, you know, share, you know, flyers and DVDs and, and posters if people want and so on. Plus, you can load up your backpacks with posters and flyers and poster all the streets, flyer all the mailboxes, hit up apartment buildings you can get into, hit up car windshields and so on. And you can really try and get the word out there. Um, but not just random stuff, you know, say, you know, meet your neighbors, invite your neighbors to be part of this, invite your neighbors to be part of this understanding for ourselves, our present, our kids and our future, right? And, and, and make it more of a, an ongoing active process, right? And, uh, and, and solicit funding, you know, from, from other people, right? There are people out there with some means that want to live in a nice place, not just, you know, sit on their pile of money and see where they live go to crap, right? So if you get together as a coalition, you can, you know, get sources of funding from the public and the people that have the means can support the people that have the will. And then you can have, you know, for example, groups supported by wealthier Canadians, retirees, grandparents that don't want to see their kids live in a crap hole, communist country, right? Um, and, and so on. And you could have, you know, say, you know, young men out there, unemployed young men in Canada. Wouldn't it be great if they were to make, you know, 700, 750 bucks a week, $36,000 a year for working eight to 10 hours a day, informing and empowering everyone where they live, right? Wear a little body cam if you want, protects you, protects everyone else and protects the group from you acting stupid, right? From, from them acting stupid. And just, um, you know, hit the streets, you know, walking around, dropping off flyers, approaching businesses, having conversations, you know, helping people express themselves on issues they care about. Um, you know, when it comes to people, they, you know, when, when in many cases, they normally can't talk about this stuff with people, right? And, uh, and, you know, you can navigate all that, but it would be great if we had a thousand people, a thousand men, uh, especially, you know, we can handle the physical stuff, you know, whatever, and deal with, you know, risks and cops and critics and girls, love girls, you know, love kids and so on. But as a man, I got to be a man and say, it's on us to do this. And if girls want to help, uh, women want to help, fantastic. If they don't, hopefully they can be good company, the women's auxiliary, not stop us or get in the way, just be confident, feminine, vulnerable, you know, attractive uh, women with confident, badass, busy men doing important things. And then if they want to pitch in and help in some ways, fantastic. If they don't, no problem. At least it's nice to have ballsy men around, um, badass dudes with fine ass chicks, raising cute ass kids who want to grow up to do that sort of stuff. Right. And, and be those kind of men and women worth being and seeing. Right. So, um, so it'd be great. Um, if you had like a thousand men in a city like Toronto working full time to inform and empower everybody else where we live so that we can, you know, um, uh, 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 you know, resist things. We can uh, uh, take better steps towards our health, towards our freedom, towards our rights, towards our future, towards understanding what's going on when it comes to the, the BLM Antifa protests and who's behind them. So we can understand that we need um, better media and we need to uh, trust better sources of information who analyze and decode the mainstream media plus do their own sort of uh, um, uh, investigations and reports on what's going on, right? We need to, 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 to support them by being a conduit from these patriots to the general public, connecting them with, you know, better sources of media and information. We need to get better media and better mainstream media. And if we act, then the mainstream media has to do a better job because as people get more informed and empowered, the media will have to appeal to them and the good people inside will get to do a better job and the bad people inside will either be forced to quit or be forced to do a better job, right? And when it comes to government, when it comes to your local school board or your 
uh, town council or your neighborhood association or when it comes to your municipal government or when it comes to your police force or sheriff or when it comes to your uh, uh, provincial or state government or even your federal government, right? If there's more informed and empowered people, we'll get better leaders as well because we'll know who to push for, what issues they should be standing for, not just, well, we believe in lower taxes and, and, and better schools and we want to you know, give everyone a, a, a $10 a year tax cut. We want to give all the schools a $10 a year you know, uh, raise to make sure they can, you know, they can uh, kids have better school books. It's like, oh, they all say the same crap, right? It becomes just a, you know, they say politics is a beauty pageant for ugly people, right? And it's just a, ugly people in a beauty pageant saying the same things, you know, basically. And, um, you know, we're, we're for the middle class, you know, and most of you are voting. It's like, oh, hey, do I like the uh, liberal who says he's for the middle class or the conservative who says he's for the middle class? Do I like the liberal that says they're for tax cuts, but not too many, we need social programs? Or do I like the conservative that says they're for tax cuts, but not too many, we need social programs, right? You can transcend the kind of uh, 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 boring, uh, uh, pathetic political pablum that we often get, right? So it'd be great if people were consistently, you know, employed to inform and empower everybody where you live in towns and cities across Canada and around the world for that matter, as part of these efforts, as part of this radical solution, right? And, and I'm working on that and I floated the idea out there. And the way I floated the idea out in terms of testing it is I get a general stoic, but positive response where people are like, hmm, you have a plan to save Canada. It uh, seems to be pretty good, it's pretty ambitious, and that's cool. And you don't want to talk about it. Do not talk about Fight Club. Don't don't talk about it with people that are uncomfortable with it. With people that are either blue pilled and don't want to learn more, or red pilled and don't want to do more. Don't don't push them. Don't pressure them. Just be cool with other people that could be cool. Be a polite patriot, right? And um, so I get a, a stoic but generally positive response to, to my ambitious plans to help save Canada at this time in history. Um, and, and that's basically it, right? So, you know, people are, the wheels are turning and who knows, and to go from sort of isolated individuals to, you know, armies of polite patriots, you know, uh, 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 creating more across the country, um, you know, as better, more confident people who uh, take themselves, each other, and where they live seriously, uh, make better people in places to live, you know, that's all possible. It's all technically possible, right? It's just a question of where there's a will, there's a way, and so we've got to beat kind of, that's why I start off with the polite Canadian fashionable mess thing. We've got to beat that and we've got to beat internet impotence as part of beating that. Um, so those are some ideas there, right? And, um, and um, you know, you, you also connect parents with, uh, with different parents' rights groups, right? And, um, and, 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 and sources of in, info and, 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 and good politicians standing for something um, and media and more, right? So some groups I recommend on this are massresistance.org, massresistance.org. If you don't know them, get to know them. And even if you don't look at them every day, file them away as a patriot and say, if you ever run into some open-minded parents, or if you ever feel the urge to kind of have something in your back pocket to pass on to parents, or if you ever feel like the urge to promote them in some way, then have massresistance.org.org in your back pocket and make it something you consider promoting because they've done a great job in, uh, in towns and cities and countries around the world of fighting for parental rights, fighting for traditional rights of parents, fighting against bad legislation, fighting against the sexualization of kids, fighting against Drag Queen Story Hour, exposing um, the fact that Drag Queen Story Hour is part of an international plan, international network uh, uh, run uh, likely by pedophiles to get pedophiles to go, well, you can't just, you know, molest kids, you know, as a pedophile, people don't like that. But if you put on a dress, dude, they'll let you into libraries and you can have them sit on your lap. You can have them crawl all over you. You can have the parents and the librarians either for it because they're, they want to be, you know, um, so in favor of this agenda or too scared to say anything negative about it because they don't want to be seen as racist, sexist, phobic, or transphobic or drag phobic or whatever. And they've actually exposed pedophiles are going to these meetings, convicted pedophiles, because they tracked them down, they looked at the license plate in their car, they studied their social media accounts, and they deduced that this guy wearing a dress is really that dude who was arrested, you know, like five years ago and sentenced to a few years in jail because they molested a kid, right? And a few, a few people like that, right? So massresistance.org does an amazing job of this, and they've got chapters around the world. So that's one group. Um, another one in Ontario, is uh, parentsasfirsteducators.ca, 
PAFE.ca. They do a great job. <clears throat> um, former uh, provincial premier candidate Tanya Granick Allen was once the head. It's now headed by uh, somebody else whose name I forget. Queenie Yu is also part of this um, this group, and uh, they do a great job of having uh, you know biweekly calls about these issues of organizing parents to sort of um, uh, uh, deal with. Uh, different political parties and try and get their agenda as parents to be a priority for uh, political parties, especially the conservative party, because they're more likely to, to be in favor of, of preserving parental rights by uh, battling against Catholic school boards, taking a knee to the LGBT, um, you know, uh, uh, sex ed and pedo sex ed and sexualizing kids when kids should not be sexualized at all. It shouldn't be an issue until you get into your late teens, and even that's early as a grown ass man. Um, you know, brain doesn't finish forming till 25, and and so on. But you know, I get it if you're in your late teens and puberty's hit, and you know you're feeling your 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 eggs, you're feeling your balls, right? I get it. But until then, you know, it shouldn't be on your mind, right? Um, you know, girls should be pretty and not sexy, and boys should be busy and not horny. Uh, you know, until you know they get to you know. Th those sort of feelings kind of start overwhelming them as they hit their late teens. They're not artificially um, uh, uh, engineered by introducing that type of information too early, right? So PAFE.ca is a great group. Uh, recently, they're talking to uh, Conservative Party of Canada leadership candidate uh, uh, Derek Sloan, right? Um, and, and they've had people talking about uh, the conversion therapy bill ban in Canada, where you are not allowed to help your kid be straight. You're only allowed to help your kid affirm their identity as gay or trans. So if you want your kid to have counseling, to say, well, slow down before you make this life-changing decision and get on hormones that retard your brain and body's growth, that sterilize you for life. If you're only three, four, five, six, seven, 10, 12, 13 years old, right? You don't know what you're doing yet, right? You, you can't make permanent life decisions yet, right? Um, before you do that, Let's make sure you can have counseling, not shock therapy, not beating it out of them, but just good quality counseling. Well, they've made that illegal in Canada. So now if your teacher or the school board or whoever says, hey, your little boy wants to be a girl, right? And we give him all sorts of attention and we fuss over him and kids love attention and your little boy wants to be a girl, your little boy wants to be a, a, a your little girl wants to be a boy and everyone starts fussing. Oh, really? Oh my goodness, I found one, I found one. I found a trans kid. Oh yes, I'm special. They're special. Everybody in the class treat little Jenny who's now turning into Johnny or little Johnny who's now turning into Jenny, treat them like they're special. Everybody go, oh, wow. Yes, they're so special. They're a boy that wants to be a girl and they're struggling with it. You know, it's like, you know, damn it. If it's so if it's so damn natural, why is it such a struggle? Why do these the trans kids need special help, right? Um, and, you know, but I can go on and on about that. And there's lots of people, you know, lots of more information about that. Bad for your body, health risks associated with all this crap. Um, you know, permanent sterilization, 80% or 90%, 80% of girls and 90% of boys or something like that. Um, you know, uh, you know, when they... Uh, uh, finish puberty, reaffirm their original gender choice or, or biological sex, right? At most, they'll be gay. There's gay guys that were like, I'm so glad that I didn't have this trans crap, um, you know, when I was a kid, because I was dressing kind of girly, but I'm happy being a gay dude. I'm happy I didn't switch to trying to be a chick, right? And um, you know, actors like Rupert Everett, British actor, um, you know, has talked about that among others, right? Um, but now they're making conversion therapy which is basically, it's their, they call it conversion therapy, like you're converting them, you know, uh, from, from, from being their normal trans or gay or whatever the little kid, you know, <clears throat> is, is supposedly into now, to being straight, when in fact, they're artificially converting little kids into being uh, uh, trans or gay, right? And uh, again, I said most people straight, great at it, LGBTQ can be too, nothing, no messing with kids, just adults, do what you do, promote what works, healthy families and relationships, uh, you know, uh, raising kids, and promote uh, individual freedom as well. So if you don't want to get married and raise kids, that's okay too, right? That's the ideal. But this, they're artificially messing with kids, and then they're saying, once we mess with kids, you're not allowed to get them some counseling to be a check and balance on us messing with them, right? That's sort of what PAFE.ca, Parents as First Educators.ca, is battling against, among other groups. Um, and the final, um, you know, website I'll mention now is LifeSiteNews.com. 
L-I-F-E-S-I-T-E news.com. They are a, um, a Christian organization, right? And, um, but they don't talk about Christianity exclusively, right? In fact, looking at their website once in a while, I would say about maybe, you know, 20% of their content is, is, is Christian, right? The other 80% is news and analyzing the news from a moral perspective, right? It may be a Christian perspective, but it's not all about like, well, you know, here's this, here's what's going on in the news and here's a Bible quote. It's like, no, 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 it's, a, it's an intelligent analysis of it. And they also, because they've got a moral perspective, they expose the United Nations and the International Planned Parenthood Federation behind the sexualizing of kids, pushing the fact that kids, um, you know, they say kids are sexual beings. They started doing this, uh, to the best of my knowledge, you know, um, publicly, aggressively around 2010 or 2011. And then a couple of years after that, the UN and their NGOs, non-governmental organizations, which means they work for the world government, the United Nations organization, they started pushing that into cultures and through legislation and the media and different parties and, and, and you know, people that they kind of uh, uh, own in, in, in different activism groups or media or, or, or politicians and, and governments and so on. That started making its way into your school system. So the UN and International Planned Parenthood Federation, they start promoting children as sexual beings with their exclaimed document in 2010 or 2011. And then within two, three, four years, it's making its way into school boards around the world, right? And that's where a lot of bad stuff comes from, the United Nations, right? Nobody in countries worldwide can say, we want to sexualize kids, sign this petition. You get dirty looks, punched in the face, arrested, and you should, right? But it comes from the UN, right? A lot of crap in your countries that, that nobody likes comes from the UN. Open borders. The UN has tons of, um, you know, uh, 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 white papers and papers on open borders, right? And they promote open borders, free movement of people, no national borders, because they want to destroy countries and be the world government, right? And they have the UN Global Compact for Migration, which guarantees you can leave any country you don't want because you might be persecuted there or unhappy there. And that sounds reasonable. But now they say you have to, uh, uh, you, you are allowed to get into any country you want. So countries can't control their own borders. And we even have to pay to transport them to our country, right? I mean, th these are things the UN is pushing for as part of their global destabilization. So lifesitenews.com deals with that, deals with the cultural issues. They deal with the day-to-day -day stuff. Um, and they also have some Christian stuff on there as well. And, I, and, and I'm not a Christian myself. I totally respect them and religion and so on. But <clears throat> I, 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 I like them because they've got a moral perspective and they've got a really smart perspective on uh, the news. And parents can appreciate that because as part of their moral perspective, they have a special interest in making sure our kids are taken care of and not just fighting kind of petty identity politics wars for the sake of fighting <clears throat> petty identity politics wars or calling the other side stupid, but with a real moral basis that is grounded in uh, religion and tradition and the, the support for the family, including support for children. So they do have that basis. So massresistance.org, uh, PAFE.ca, Parents as First Educators, uh, uh, you know, is a great group, and lifesitenews.com. And you can simply look on the internets for more when it comes to groups doing this in your uh, town or city or state or province or country uh, in Canada and around the world, right? So, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, but yeah, you know, I guess, um, I guess, you know, uh, leave it there for now, and um, and and I hope that helps. Um, but yeah, you know, it's it's a comprehensive explanation for why you know, oh, Canada, you know, help parents save our kids from communists or be killed by them for having nice stuff, right? Because you know, it's, it's a huge issue, right? We don't want tons of Canadian commie zombie kids or, or, or kids around the world hopped up on this crap, you know, uh, uh, thinking their parents suck and being organized into armies that kill them, right? And if you're saying, dude, that's way that's way too extreme, you're, you're totally out there. No, they've done this before. This is what they've done. If you study the history of communist China and communist Russia, especially later, Russia was a little tougher because um, they still had armies of commie zombies there, but definitely in communist China, communist Vietnam, and so on, they had armies of 12, 13, 14 year olds, or the Nazi Germany had the youth, the, the brown shirt youth brigade. And even in Russia, they had youth brigades. They get the young people, they get disempowered young people 
all hopped up, all mobbed up, you know, on the power, um, resenting their parents, rebelling against their parents, and they direct them in these ways. And you did have in communist China and other places, armies of 12, 13, 14 year olds attacking their parents because their parents were like, ah, no, we're adults. We created a good culture and a good country and we know how to do things and and you know we want to pass it on to the next generation maybe improve on it in certain ways but doesn't all suck we don't have to destroy it we don't need a big bolshevik communist marxist revolution and the kids were like no we've been brainwashed in, into saying you're wrong or we've been given power by you know the evil government and and you're wrong and if you don't if we can't convert you we have to kill you like this is they've literally done this so this is not just some sort of crazy, wild-eyed fantasy or theory I have. They've literally done this, and it looks like they're literally trying to do it now again. And so this is something that we need to stop here in Communist Canada, hopefully not Communist Canada soon, and something that people around the world need to stop because it's happening worldwide as part of a globalist agenda, the globalist communist agenda that nationalists and patriots have to battle against. And then be globalism still got to clean up a bunch of corruption and crap in your own countries too and you can't just blindly support what's going on in your own countries but definitely knowing that there's a bigger globalist agenda behind doing a lot of stupid things to people and stupid things to people in your country can help you feel like we got to connect we're under attack right we get if there was a bunch of un and commie chinese troops that were at the border of canada or the border of a city like toronto You'd be knocking on your neighbor's doors. Hey, hey, wake up. We get, get stuff. Get pots and pans. Make potato guns. Get your hockey sticks. Get, we got to fight. We got the right, they're right here. They're attacking us. I need you, man. I may, may, we might be neighbors. I may have never said hello to you in 10 years because we're neighbors and we live in a big city and you don't want to get too close to people and be, bother each other or whatever. But I need you now, dude. We, we got to go, right? We, we, we got to go. And if you can load up your backpack with weapons to fight them in that Red Dawn scenario, you can certainly load it up with posters and flyers and, and, and wake up your hood and do some of the other things I mentioned in this video, right? But it's that type of situation where if we unify our people against this external threat and against the threat of communism and unify our people around protecting our kids, especially the guys, but also women can help when it comes to this and, and, and protecting our kids. If we unify our people around that, then I definitely think we can fight back. So that's my thesis when it comes to this and that. Um, and there you have it. So BK from manforwars.com. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, share, get in touch with questions or support. And, uh, and, 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 and try and support this channel and these efforts because then you'll see more uh, success relative to this as opposed to, whatever, dude, I just want to find some more interesting stuff to look at that blows my mind. It's like, well, you know, I'm, and good luck. There's lots of stuff out there and uh, I look at it too, but uh, I'm more concerned about what we can do as opposed to just, you know, talking about, you know, the fact that we're awake and <clears throat> isn't it great to be awake and people need to be awake. Awake and do what, right? Awake and do what? Um, that's a real concern too. Right. So so we also need to support people that are figuring out what to do. And uh, and so get in touch with questions or answers or concerns or support. And uh, and, and we'll keep this pile of rocks and trees strong and free. And that's what I got to say. So, again, BK from ManforWars.com. Um, I do hope this helps and I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.